Control GPU fans making a video today looking at the Kyori and Tesla architectures from NVIDIA. The Kyori architecture is represented by this Quadro FX 5500 card which is probably the top of the range card that used the Kyori architecture similar to a 7900 GTX but strangely I found that this card has DDR2 memory instead of DDR3 so bandwidth is reduced quite significantly which is a bit disappointing although it does have one gigabyte of memory if you look at the underside it's got memory chips on the reverse of the PCB but yeah DDR2 don't know why but it must have been some sort of limitation with the card but I've found that some versions of the cards do have DDR3 so not sure why that why that decision was made to represent the Tesla ar architecture we've got the Quadro FX 5600 and that is very similar to the 8800 GTX and that the only difference is it does have DDR3 but again it's got memory on the reverse of the board and we've got one and a half gigabytes of memory which is nice same cooler as the 8800 GTX but the printed circuit board it's extended slightly towards the rear of the card so a slight difference in the uh, in the PCB the reason I'm wanting to do this video is that the Kyori architecture was the last architecture NVIDIA made with the old style vertex and pixel shaders so it had 24 pixel shaders 8 vertex shaders and up to the Tesla architecture that was the way cards had been for a number of years and then switching to Tesla we had the unified shader architecture which had 128 shaders that could be used for either pixel or vertex shading and this gives a massive advantage in some games especially games that are vertex that, that are heavy in processing vertices because you've essentially got you know up to 128 shaders that can be deployed in my opinion this jump in architecture was and tell me in the comments if I'm wrong it was the most significant upgrade that NVIDIA has done um, possibly more so than going from TNT2 to the first GeForce card I would say in regards to performance absolutely massive um, massive massive upgrade and although these cards are readily available if you're a collector of GPUs I suggest getting an 8800 GTX or maybe one of these quadros and put it in your collection because it really is in my opinion it's it's one of the most significant graphics cards of, of all time le leading us to where we are now really um, with GPUs today so basically I'm just going to have a look at the performance between the two and I've chosen the call of um, Pripyat benchmark running in DirectX 9 same um, same shader path uh, for both cards medium settings um, just trying to think of the what re resolution I'm going to be running. Um, Twelve eighty by a thousand twenty eight re resolution, and um, I just want to show the difference in performance. It, it may be a bit unfair running this game on the the um, the Kyori card because I'm using a slight. I'm using the latest drivers for both cards, so latest Quadro drivers for both cards. So maybe the driver wasn't as advanced at, at, at the, I mean I think it's round about the 309 driver I can't remember the, the exact number round, round about 309 for the Quadro driver the 7900 don't know how that fits in with the release of the uh, that of that stalker game but the um, performance difference is pretty significant so 
just wanted um, you to see that and I um, think I'll have to look at this look at these cards again and maybe think if there's um, maybe more a more suitable game that I can use to benchmark but the Corolla Pripyat benchmark is pretty useful because you've got DirectX 9, 10 and 11 um, paths, render paths which is really useful for testing different types of hardware it's an easy benchmark to use and um, it, it's fairly you know it's fairly intense for the older cards but you know when you're getting up to the unified shader model cards they, they, you know they can easily they can easily render it but we'll have a look at the uh, have a look at the benchmark results and see what you think and then um, maybe think about some other some other things that we can look at with this this big step up in architectures um, in, in NVIDIA's range.